Good morning, my YouTube viewers. It is Crystal here. I want to give you a code review of the machine language Olympiad that's governed by Google, that's sponsored by Google. <coughs> so I've been working on this a lot, and basically, um, what I'm going to show you is a model that I've done but I haven't been able to submit it to Kaggle yet and the reason why is because you're only allowed two submissions a day but I'm going to go ahead and show you the model and then at midnight tonight I'm going to submit it and we'll see what happens see if my score is better you can see that my best score is 0.25 which isn't very much but when you see what I've done, then you'll understand why. So this is ML Olympiad, and I used the Ridge, SK Learns Ridge, as the model for it. So this is your problem statement. Uh, MPL, ML Olympiad is an associated Kaggle community competition hosted by Google ML communities, supported by Google developers, Aim of the competition, prognostics and health management is an important topic in industry for predicting the state of assets to avoid downtime and failures. The competition aims to predict whether the engines will fail in a fixed time window. The original data set comes from the famous NASA turbofan jet engine degradation. However, we ran a synthetic data generation algorithms to build our test set for the competition. The engine is operated normally at the start of each time series and develops a fault at some point during the time series. In the training set, the fault grows in magnitude until system failure. In the test set, the time series ends sometime prior to system failure. The objective of the competition is to predict if the engine will fail within the subsequent 21 time cycles after the last known data point in the test set. If RUL is less than or equal to 21. So what we did was we created the program in a Jupyter Notebook and Kaggle. And then what we did was we imported our libraries. So we imported NumPy as NP, which is your numerical computations, your Pandas as PD, which is your data processing, and it creates data frames and series. We imported OS, which goes into the operating system. We imported Matplotlib, which visualizes the data, and we imported Seaborn, which also visualizes the data. We loaded the files and we got our three files of test, train, and sample. We used pandas to read the files and convert them to data frames. So we converted them to train, test, and submission. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to see all of the columns. So I used pandas to set the maximum columns. So now we can see all of the columns. Check the info. We can see all of the columns are numeric, which is good. That means that I don't have to encode anything. We check describe so you can see the count, the mean, the STD, standard deviation, minimum, 6, 25%, 50%, uh, 75%, and maximum. And what we wanted to do is we wanted to check the unique check the number of unique values for each column in the train set. And then what I did was I analyzed the RUL that tells you how much life you've got left in the engine. So there's your RUL. Um, we checked for any null var variables in the train set. There's not any null values, which is good because I don't have to impute anything. And then we check the test set. And in the test set, what I did was I K 
counted the number of units, the number of times each unit appears in a row. So count units equals test unit number dot value counts, converted count units to a data frame, which I could have converted it into a series. I converted it to a data frame in this instance, but since it has only one column, you could have just as easily converted it to a series. And then I sorted it by the index, and then there you go. So that, that tells you how many times each unit number appears. And then what I did was I mapped the count units into the test set and created another column called count units. Then here's your submission. This is what they want to see on the submission. I defined my target, which was train URL, and then I created a comb combi, which is a combination of train and test, by dropping the RUL. Then I defined my features, and when I defined my features, I selected everything except the unit number, and then I went back and I selected everything except count units. And then we've got our features, so it's missing the unit numbers and the count features because you don't need that. Created a heat map. You can see that a lot of the uh, columns are very highly correlated, but I decided not to do anything about that because the data in the columns is going to change which is going to cause the unit to go into failure. So you can check the correlation here. You can see how each column correlates to each other and they all have a very high, not most of them have a very high correlation. Now I've normalized the features and I've converted the features to uh, cells to values between zero and one. So now we've got values between zero and one. And, and the reason why we do that is because the model will train and fit better if the data is normalized. And then um, what I did was um, I defined my X and my Y variables, which is your independent and dependent variables respectively. Your Y variable is your target and your X variable is features the zero row up to the length of train and X test is features the length of train all the way to the end. I split, I inserted code to split the um, data set up into training and validation. So I selected my model and in this instance I selected the ridge and ridge is a linear model. I got um, 61% accuracy on that. Then I tested my validation set and I predicted on the validation set and I got a 60% accuracy on that. I checked my error. I got an error of 56%. I compared the actual values to the predicted values. And then I plotted the actual values and the predicted values onto a graph so you can see where the actual values are and where the predicted values are. I made predictions on the test set and so um, if the prediction is greater than the test count units then the prediction equals the test count unit. I converted the test prediction to a data frame and so test prediction the unit number is the test unit number and the test prediction RUL is the prediction. Check for info on test prediction you can see both of those are integers. So now what we have to do is we have to determine the failure. And so this is the tricky part because you have to decide 
what your algorithm is going to be. So I used a for loop to go from range, then a test prediction. So three weeks equals test prediction dot I lot row minus 21. If test prediction RUL dot I lot row is less than three weeks, um, failure equals one, else failure equals zero. And then so um, so now we've got test failure prediction equals failure prediction. So you can see that. And then now what we did was we did the value count. We had 29,000 ones and 25,000 zeros. So now we look at a pivot table. We take the test prediction and we take the test and we convert it to a pivot table and the index is going to be the unit number and the values is going to be the failure prediction and then the pivot unit number equals the pivot index pivot index names equals index so here's your pivot name pivot table so you've got your index your failure prediction and your unit number so what we've done is we plotted it onto a graph using seaborn and you can see that the um, failure rate is similar to a normal distribution. I'd also like to say that when you don't specify what you want on your pivot table, whether you want it to be a sum, then it will automatically calculate the average. So that's what happened. That's what this pivot table calculated the average. And so this is another tricky part too. I had to decide what I was going to do. So I decided that if the average was greater than 0 0.5, then it was going to be a 1. Otherwise, it was going to be a 0. Converted failure to a series, and then I counted it. So we had 263 zeros and 88 ones. Got to prepare my submission. So this is my submission. And... Um, all I've got to do is submit it to Kaggle, but I can't do that at, until midnight tonight. But I had a similar model, and I had 25% accuracy on that. So I'm hoping that when I submit this to Kaggle on midnight tonight, that my accuracy will be better. If my accuracy isn't better, then I'll know that I didn't do it correctly. So there you go. Uh, it's unfortunately that we only allowed two submissions a day because I can't work on it very much if you're only allowed two submissions a day. But I guess that's what they want. That's why they call it ML Olympiad. They want to see how good you are. But one thing that I will say is if we come over here to my other Kaggle, um, come over here to competitions. Okay, ML Olympiad, I mean, yesterday when I uh, started the competition, they didn't have anybody enter the competition. And so I was one out of one. So, and then what happened was obviously somebody else decided to enter the competition as well. So now I'm one out of two, but I did win a bronze medal on one of my um, one of my models so so that's good I, I won a bronze medal on one of my models but the model had lower accuracy than the this 
the other module, so I don't really understand that, but that's just something to think about. So I'm going to go ahead and close this close this video because I've done the code review for you. I've showed you what I've done. I'm going to wait till midnight to submit it to Kaggle, and with any luck, I'll have a higher accuracy. If I don't have a higher accuracy, then I guess it's just back to the drawing board. So thank you so much for watching my video. If you like it, please like, subscribe, and share. And I would like to thank my subscribers for supporting my channel.